welcome scholars um, for um, attending our uh, course on health economics as part of the NPTEL. Here we are discussing the uh, important aspect of behavioral economics um, chapters on specifically on prospect theory. I am just recapping what we did it and what we are targeting to do. Uh, we started the basics of behavioral economics in the previous lecture and uh, here we will discuss more on prospect theory initially uh, developed by Ken Mann and Tabaski in 1979. We will also emphasize uh, the problems with expected theory and the origin of this and their framing, certainty, reflection, loss aversion effects and uh, we will talk about uh, editing and evaluation phases in choice process. And we will also uh, emphasize the discussion of value and weighting functions and also uh, we will uh, discuss endowment and status quo biases uh, as attached with the existing theories. So, considering the, the, the work of Ken Mann and uh, Amos Tabaski on the aspect called prospect theory. I mean both of them introduced the prospect theory in 1979 and their famous paper was called prospect theory and analysis of decision on the risk and uh, it is also known as uh, you know, loss aversion theory because it points out that the fear of loss is greater than the satisfaction from profit. Okay. So, uh, this theory critiques the EUT that is expected utility theory uh, which provides an alternative model and accounts for bounded rationality by relaxing the assumption of complete transitivity and independent preferences which you used to take in the EUT uh, theory or the expected utility theory. Choices among risky prospects exhibit several pervasive effects. Uh, inconsistent with utility you know, theories basic principles. Prospect theory in psychology suggests that people uh, will think about gains and losses and prioritize the potential value of losses and gains rather than the potential outcome while choosing from the possible alternatives. We are just comparing here the EUT and the PT, prospect theory and the expected utility theory and we mentioned already that the EUT is based on the rationality assumption and uh, the rationality is again bounded as uh, mentioned by Kenman and Tabersky and bounded rationality that means that people with you know, cognitive limitations and unable to make decisions consistent with completeness, transitivity and independence and uh, that is actually discussed in the previous lecture. And uh, coming to the prospect theory that is mentioned that irrational you know uh, human behavior influenced by various biases like risk averse and risk seeking behavior even at the same time as well. Three main biases are noted while understanding the PT or the prospect theory. They are called certainty, reflection, and loss aversion. Even uh, to count uh, the contribution of this theory, uh, Daniel Kahneman and received the Nobel Prize in 2002. Unfortunately, Tversky passed away before 2002 and could not own the prize. So, uh, then what is a prospect? Prospect is Caring with the probabilities with the choice function and uh, is indeed uh, prospect is indeed a contract uh, that yields outcome xi with probability pi whereas the sum of the pi should be equal to 1. Then um, the prospect uh, theory uh, where uh, the extent of risk is, is explained then what is a riskless prospect to be explained? What is called riskless? A prospect that yields x with certainty you know, and donated by only x. 
whereas the risk prospect and, and the decision making on the risk can be viewed as a selection of uh, you know or, or selection between prospects or gambles or lotteries. So, uh, prospect theories are actually presented through, through the valuation functions, how people actually value their contracts or the prospects. So, it is exactly mentioned as uh, maybe you know for a lottery L, the value of L is equal to the value of those possible you know outcomes with their probabilities. Okay. So, if people are rational, then the valuation function that is B must follow the basic you know, mathematical properties uh, such as completeness, transitivity and independence. So, completeness as I told you, it largely emphasizes the or, or clarifies the in extent of in, you know, um, independent decisions. And uh, not, uh, and and that that's basically when A is preferred to B or similarly B is also preferred to you know A when a combination of prospect with their value or the value function which combines the prospects of A is preferred to A or or, or the value of the prospect of B over A that means these two are actually independent that's called com completeness or preferences transitivity uh, I think need not be clarified. And so far as independence is concerned, once any prospect uh, you know, and the evaluation is, is preferred, their, their, their uh, combination is also preferred over you know, or the, uh, the expected value of those is also preferred over the other basket of choices. So, this is largely called uh, the valuation function and uh, the valuation function under expected equity theory, this is what is presented. Or to you. Uh, so, Neumann and Morgenstern proved that only uh, one functional form for V satisfy all three properties which we have just mentioned now properties like completeness, uh, transitivity and independence. Uh, this valuation function uh, which we have just said B is a function of this combination of or, or function of their individual outcomes with their respective probabilities when we say this uh, and uh, this uh, through through the you know uh, typical uh, Neumann and Morgenstern approach of uh, presenting the expected unit theorem uh, this valuation uh, function is also known as von Neumann Morgenstern utility function. This valuation equation is the statistical definition of expected utility of all outcomes from lottery A the theory that people make decisions on uncertainty based on this particular evaluation function in the expected utility theory which I already discussed. Coming to some of the evidence that people make choices that contradicts the EUT which we already started discussing in the last lecture. Here we are actually discussing the contradictions based on the possible prospects. We will also clarify each of them with some examples starting with misjudging probabilities then framing then loss aversion, then within misjudging probability there are two maybe you know overvaluing certainty that means certainty effect is, is noted or uh, overhauling small probabilities. I will clarify just now other uh, category in the case of loss aversion there are endowment effect and the importance reference points will clarify. Starting with the overhauling you know certainty which we have just said. Mm, okay. Uh, right. So, uh, overvaluing certainty, yes, overvaluing certainty where uh, the irrational decision might uh, or irrational decision making might be you know due to misestimate probability of risk. KNT or Kahneman and Tversky show that even if true probabilities are known people's stated preference violates rationality. Overhauling you know uh, overvaluing uh, certainty uh, where people may overweight outcomes that are certain to you know uncertain outcomes. Okay. So, you I will I'll give you the example as well like in, in, in the two cases when the certainty is, is there, but the expected outcome is even higher than that, but still people prefer the certainty ones. So, that has actually indication of 
certain defect. Best known counter example to expected utility theory which explored the certain defects as we mentioned for the case of LIS 1953 example. We can also revisit and explain. Okay, you can just see here uh, uh, this is where we are going to explain the allies paradox as well. Um, uh, Kahneman, Kahneman and Tversky discuss variations of uh, allies example to explain the certainty effect. So, uh, here in the problem 1 there are 2 um, uh, case 1 is in the case a you will see uh, 2500 is the outcome with the probability of uh, 0.33 and uh, another 2400 uh, outcome with the probability of 0.66 and 0 with probability uh, 0.01 whereas in the case b we have 2400 certainty or, or uh, the outcome with certainty is 2400. It has been observed that uh, out of 72 people who took this question, uh, only 18 percent choose option A, while the 82 percent actually choose B because of this certainty. You can just see what really happens uh, so far as the expected utility is concerned. And the first case that is case A, it is the expected utility is even higher that is 2409, 2409 which is higher than that of the case B, but in the case B it has certainty indicator occasions that is with no probabilities or the probability is 1. Okay. Uh, but uh, because of certainty effect, uh, the preference is higher for the case B. This means that the valuation for A is actually lesser than that of the valuation for B by the people, okay. even if the expected utility is, is different. Now we are presenting another another case 2. Case 1 we have already said 82 percent choose option B. Okay, now we are actually presenting case 2 uh, presenting another problem where both the cases are attached with certain probabilities. So far as the return is concerned in the case C you will find 2500 with probability 0.3 whereas in the case D it is 2400 with probability 0.34. Okay. So, uh, however, if, if you just check this seven, out of the 72 people 83 percent actually choose option C okay, as against only 70 percent for D. So, we will just calculate uh, the valuation function based on the you know Tversky and, and Kahneman. You will see what really happens in the, in the you know problem 1 case we have already mentioned the valuation is higher for the case B. This is what we, we mentioned and uh, where is in problem 2 uh, just the reverse is noted. Even if as a, the respective utility the ratio are same in both the case, but choices are different just the reverse. Okay. And uh, here uh, the C is, is preferred with uh, less probability. Okay and um, as against D, uh, but you just see what happens when we take, uh, I mean just we need to note that uh, throughout this uh, chapter we assume that the utility function, uh, we need to first note that utility function is actually normalized throughout otherwise it is difficult to compare different context and uh, since utility is a relative concept and uh, uh, that means you know superior outcomes offer more utility than the inferior ones regardless of the their absolute level. Now, uh, from this example this and this what we have seen that um, the expected utility uh, function may not accurately describe how people value lotteries with uncertain outcomes. Okay, so, with uncertain outcome people are actually highly confused and, and their views are not actually signaling how in, in generality or, or in general context the reverse you know preference are taken. So, this is how is actually called uh, you know uh, called partly discussed for case A is even if this is higher than 
this is greater and this is lesser, but the choices are actually different. This is precisely called Ellis paradox. Here in in problem 2, another 2 problems we are uh, just citing for your uh, reference, we are just mentioning you can calculate and, and explain, you know these kind of questions might be there in your assignment. So, I am just keeping you for you to go through, however, I am just giving you directions. Kahneman and Tversky attributed this flaw in UT to uh, the certainty effect, okay, which you have started explaining. Uh, that means, uh, the people have the, you know, have a, you know, certain rigidity, have certain rigidity in their mind to go for uh, uh, the, the outcome which has uh, certain degree of certainty, okay. The failure of EUT implies that people seem to be using a valuation function uh, other than the expected utility function as proposed by uh, Neumann and Orgenstern. So, uh, uh, we have already mentioned these uh, you know um, uh, details in the previous lecture as well that you know as per the problem 3 and problem 4 you can you can just see I am not explaining much. We have already said that this violates you know UT uh, you can try on your own ok. So, coming to um, problem number 5 another case where the case of overvaluing small probabilities that is very interesting to note uh, identify rightly by those uh, authors as part of the explanation of prospect theory. They compare with what is called the actual probabilities uh, as against the pro perceived probabilities. There are some tendency of the people to you know perceive the probability differently ok. Like um, when we have uh, you know 0 probability ok, uh, you, you see like in, in this example 5000 with probability 0 0.001 that means the uh, you know outcome is with a certainty is there, but the probability is, is very less and 0 with the probability with uh, surety is there. Uh, that is 0 0.999, you are going to get a 0 outcome that means you are going to get an uh, outcome with higher probability. Another as against another case is like you know 5 with certainty, people choose largely with case A or the option A that is 7 to 1 only because of the fact that you know this has guarantee, this has given a higher guarantee with very small probabilities ok. So, when the probability actual probabilities are close to 0, close to 0, okay, you can just see from the you know, 45 degree line, when actual probability is very close to 0, people actually do not uh, put it as 0. People say that yes, it has a higher probability because when it is 0, they as if you know the probabilities will be very less and surety is there, they take the risk. Okay? So, people seem to systematically overweight very low probabilities and underweight medium or large probability once it ex extend you know certain level of probabilities they started giving higher value uh, ok uh, or giving underweight sorry underweight uh, overweight the lower probabilities and uh, you know underweight the medium and large. Therefore, this diagram is actually clarifying the difference High, at the 0 level it is higher and at and, 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 and other level you will feel the difference. Uh, one uh, typical example is given for in the context of the, the person who used to uh, smoke, okay. the chances of uh, smoking and its outcome is expected to be catastrophic. But those who are uh, just started or at the, the beginner level or just uh, you know, taking um, very few uh, you know, time frequency of smoking, they usually overestimate the probability of this event to happen or the mortality uh, or the risk ok. So, maybe you know at the start those who are starting with this um, or the light smoker overestimate their mortality risk whereas, the heavy smoker once they are habituated they know they, they in between they might have you know derived certain perceived understanding this since this is not creating any trouble therefore, they also predict that you know with uh, heavy smoking it is not going to create any problem. Hence, heavy smokers underestimate their risk. This is another example I think you can uh, apply in your work 
Okay, so uh, this was uh, referred to the Kahneman and Tversky, the original writing in 1979, uh, differentiating perceived probability and actual probabilities. This is precisely called overvaluing small probabilities. Another is called framing. In expected utility uh, theory, final outcomes are all that matters. What frame you make, finally, what you get really matters. Uh, in, in prospect theory, however, uh, it is you know it is uh, presented a little uh, differently. It is presented as how uh, a final state is reached that really matters. I mean, state and the process really matters. Like in EUT expected utility theory, if you are given fifty dollar directly or first given hundred dollar, then taken back fifty dollar, both ways gives equal utility. In uh, this framework, these two situations are actually equivalent. Whereas in case of prospect theory, these are not the same. Framing of a problem can affect the perception of how valuable each choice. Uh, giving and taking are not the same same activities, or the not not having the same choice function, not the preference function. Uh, so far as uh, you know, prospect theory is concerned, one is called uh, to explain this. It is called isolation effect, how far the things which you have already perceived already possess you know getting isolated from you, you might give higher importance to that uh, possession. Different decompositions of a pair of prospects into common and unique components can result in varied preferences. This phenomenon known as isolation effect, this highlights how diverse decomposition may yield different outcomes. The isolation effect implies that the contingent certainty of the fixed return enhances the attractiveness of this option relative to a risky venture with the same probability outcome. So, this occurs, isolation effect occurs when people have presented two options with the same outcome, but different routes to outcome is important. In this case, people are likely to cancel out similar information to lighten the cognitive load and their conclusions will vary depending upon the options they have been framed. So, others are uh, like you know representation whether it is through a standard representation or through a sequential representation. We are presenting here uh, through a problem. Uh, here is a problem called uh, problem 4 through a, a two stage game. Okay. So, first stage with a probability is 0.75 to end the game without winning and anything and the probability is 1 fourth or 2.25 to move to the second stage. If it is there in this it has a you know uh, sequence you know if uh, sequence follows with other probability like you know in the second stage we have probability 8 to win 4000 or 0 with you know 20 percent probability or there are two sequence uh, first one is this then second one is you know win 3000 with certainty. In this two stage game, winning 4000 has what is the probability then? Uh, you can just see uh, in the first stage, second stage we started with uh, you know uh, backward counting like 4000 with 0.8 uh, probabilities. Since the person has opted for the second stage, that means person must, might have uh, taken the game, Okay, must have entered the first game. Probability to end the game without winning, that means 0.75 person has actually closed in the first case. So, uh, the person has entered to the second stage with the probability of this, that means this has to be taken. So, this is included 0 0.25 times 0 0.8, so 0 0.8 is here. So, the joint probability is actually 20 percent to win 4000. Okay? And uh, to win 3000, again 0 0.25 is there and the second stage it does not have any you know probability. So, that means 0 0.25 times you know 3000. Okay? So, uh, I mean sorry, uh, no, time second one is um, 0.25, second times uh, second stage it has probability 1. Okay. So, 0.25 times 1 to get that 3000. Hence, for the second case the probability is 0.25. This shows how choices may be altered by varying representation of their probabilities. Here uh, we are just presenting uh, the sequential aspects, how it follows you can just see the nodes are presenting differently and this gives you know direct uh, you know possibilities to the second phase whereas this has a choice function. Okay. In the first one again to get 3000 
as the outcome you have one fourth probabilities and uh, you you have three fourth probabilities or 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 0.75 probability to get you know zero as the outcome okay uh, and uh, whereas in another case you have uh, one fifth probability that is 20 20 percent uh, probability to get uh, 4000 and uh, uh, 4 fifth is, is zero uh, so, uh, decision makers face a choice between these two risk prospects, two prospects are independent to each other. Uh, in problem 4, uh, most people choose 20 percent probability to get 4000 at the uh, as the outcome because it is very clearly uh, you know paying more because this is the one whereas 25 percent probabilities uh, to get 3000 is not the one rather this is preferred than that of this ok. Ok, coming to the sequential formulation in another form uh, is, is how if uh, you know one fourth I mean there are two stages this is actually uh, with, with surety uh, 3000 is uh, received in the second stage that means one four times one to get this or to this is in any case is not, not obtained since 0 is the outcome. So, one is actually following this if this is the case in the again in the second stage this time one four times this for to get this and or one four times one four to get this. So, by comparing all these possibilities one will reach at the conclusion. So, uh, two prospects are, are in this case two prospects are actually dependent all right. So, decision maker face a choice between risky and risk less prospect and two prospects are actually dependent uh, because the probabilities on the first and the second are actually dependent to each other. So, yes certainty advantage is there in case of choice function. So, they choose you know 3000 with, with certainty and then we have also presented in our previous case about how certainty uh, is, is considered to be you know usually preferred. So, another aspect is called loss aversion. So far as uh, we assume people are either less risk averse or less seeking or neutral, uh, actually they are both you know at the same time you know they might be uh, risk averse as well as they might be risk okay risk seeking alright. So, it has a link with their uh, endowment and it has link with their status quo okay. So, uh, if it is connects it, it connects to the endowment the tendency of people to attach greater value to a loss of a given amount than to an equivalent gain. If they are losing something actually you know they give you know more because they have an endowment effect they have already been attached with that product. So, if you are giving equivalent amount to that still people may not give more weightage. Status quo where effect it suggests that a tendency of people to prefer the current situation and uh, to be resistant to to the change. So, whatever was there they, they already perceived already reached they prefer to uh, reach that level only that is part of uh, status quo. Reference points are necessary to discuss utility gains and losses as outcomes may differ with change in reference points. Of course, it, it matters where you start ok. So, the way how it is it is presented uh, it is, is or represented matters ok. So, um, uh, either in a, there are two ways of presenting the prospects uh, one is called pros positive prospect and a negative prospect. Like if you pro, you know present the persons to uh, with their positive effects they are get, getting the returns in positive they are actually preferring the certain 80 percent of the people out of the 95 people uh, in total they prefer with certainty without any with this is probabilities and uh, probability attached with case A as against case B. So, they prefer more of case B uh, ok uh, where positive values are given if the reverse is just given that you are supposed to get an outcome with a loss of something as against another loss ok. So, if another case C and case D is presented, but the presentation is through a loss then people actually prefer just the reverse ok. So, it is you can just compare these as against these it is just the reverse alright. So, they do not want to actually you know, lose by certainty ok. 
if there are certain amount of losing you know somewhere so they are least preferred. Similarly in other cases you see uh, this one 65 percent preferred whereas just the reverse is noted here okay in case of negative prospects. I think I have already discussed and this is also called uh, reflection, reflection effect when something is reflected or in a mirror uh, image is, is presented but the choice function actually just gets reversed alright. And the replacement prospects around 0, so from, from 0 means from positive or from negative sides. So, we have already discussed this, I think uh, you can go through and, and find out how uh, some people are both risk averse as well as uh, the risk seeking uh, from the example as well. Coming to uh, the uh, prospect theory uh, in terms of uh, some pages, it is it's, it's called editing page or evaluation page. Uh, hence, decisions are taken accordingly. Okay. Editing phase uh, consists of preliminary analysis of uh, uh, the offer prospects and this uh, is to organize and reformulate the options. So, that uh, the prospects are considered to be different and choice are accordingly taken. Usually, the marketing guys uh, follow you know, those, those rules, those uh, strategies to attract the customers. And in, in evaluation phase, in particular, edited prospects are further evaluated and, and prospects of highest value is actually chosen. You can see the, in the editing phase, in the first one, they start with further coding, you know, of the you know, um, preferences or the choices or the outcomes. And uh, that individuals view results as gain or losses in relation to reference point. And they uh, you know make you know combinations of the prospects um, for for simplification purposes. Like you can see, uh, if this is the you know probabilities are attached, 25 percent probabilities to get 200. In another case, is is the the uh, and then choice is, is there. If they combine these two you know uh, choice, uh, there is a 50 percent probabilities to get uh, 200. So combining model is going to be more preferred and accordingly. Uh, choosing. Similarly, segregation when we segregate uh, uh, the riskless component in particular uh, from the risky component. Okay, so, like you can see here, uh, these as against this, then the, this can be you know uh, decomposed into a simplified versions of uh, segregation called only minimum 100 is actually guaranteed with at least in both the choices 80 percent is there to receive 100 as the outcome okay, or gain. So, that and uh, you know in this case, uh, okay, so what we have see we out of these the prospect of these two a case a and case b is decomposed into a sure gain of 200 okay. and the risk prospect is in this case is actually uh, again still there is a risk component is called 100 okay, with 80 percent probabilities. But for sure 200 is actually is, is the surety of gain when we segregate them correctly. Another is cancellation when you know uh, repetition or the common constitutes are there in the choice uh, function or in the choice basket. So, the common uh, constitutes can be uh, can be avoided okay, can be cancelled alright. So, discarding the common constitute like this is what we have highlighted in this case, this is for one, this is just uh, avoided and we just compare other options right. So, a uh, sequence of editing uh, really matters and that really helps for a better prospect. So, another is called uh, valuation phase which we have um, we have said evaluation phase. Um, so, uh, that is called uh, e evaluation phase where valuation function is important and this carries uh, the better weighting functions okay, of those uh, value function we already started discussing. Valuation function under uh, prospect theory is analogous to the expected utility uh, theory. This uh, differs than that of the UT because UT function evaluates absolute income only, uh, whereas in PT value function is calculated relative to a reference point that is more important. Uh, hence, you know, prospect theory's value function evaluates changes in their income as well health rather than absolute level of their 
the states. Therefore, the value function can model loss aversion as well. Okay, so for given value of x, value of this one should be at least less than that of the minus of that level. Okay, so uh, the value function is is presented in this uh, illustration. We just see that it it follows uh, from in the positive part. It follows a, a you know a convex function. Uh, co uh, sorry, uh, it follows a convex. Sorry, um, um, I mean the in the positive side, secondary derivative since it is uh, going to be you know negative, so it follows a concave function. Whereas in the negative side of it, or in the um, other side of the value, we have a convex function. All right, so because of this, and you will see one another interesting aspect that when the negative side of it is being evaluated, you see the changes are very sharp. Okay, and uh, the value function is therefore uh, for the losses is steeper than that of the value function of the gains. This is actually more steeper. This the this downward side is actually more steeper than that of the gain side. There are different characteristics of value functions. I think um, you may go through in detail. I am not presenting. So this follows a you know uh, a shape curve, and uh, uh, this reflects you know diminishing sensitivity. Uh, I have already mentioned how people give you know different value at different um, you know uh, gain as against losses. We have already presented in our diagram positive prospect as against to negative prospect side also. Here also, when you go for the negative uh, addition of something, your uh, you know diminishing utility is is different than than that of the rate of diminishing utility of the positive side. Uh, so it doesn't uh, depend on the wealth level and solely depends on uh, uh, gains and losses relative to the reference point which correspond to the origin as well similarly you can see the point of origin that compares with the loss of aversion we have already discussed since we are running short of time now not mentioning much i'm just clarifying um, the basic details Similarly, in this prospect theory, you will see you know decision weights, how it matters. Uh, decision weights may look alike probabilities. They affect uh, how much each outcome is considered. The decision weight of impossible event is also zero, just like probability. And for certain event, its weight is one. I think these are we have discussed. Uh, however, the decision weights diverge from their associated probability, and some of all decisions do not always add up to one, and is often less than one. That is another interesting aspect. Therefore, this property is known as sub-certainty. It's not hundred percent certainty. This is to be noted, and you might see some of the questions in the assignment or in the final exam. So you see, there are uh, uh, we have uh, to clarify this. You can also cross check. So the sum of the you know, value uh, and these weights you know, are not necessarily going to be one in this case. So um, uh, uh, given this example, the the value function as presented uh, for the problem one and problem two, you will just see that 82 percent actually choose option B because of certainty, and in the other C and D case, uh, actually you know uh, more people preferred for C. And this also clarifies from our prospect function that um, value of B is greater than that of value of A, and in this case, problem two value of C is greater than that of value function of D. Okay, so uh, you can just see how it is uh, calculated. We have given the steps for each of their probabilities. Okay, and accordingly, we can find out the total valuation. In the other case also, it is uh, defined step by step. So this is what we already discussed. Uh, so um, like you know, uh, the endpoint behavior is also important. So event is guaranteed. So decision weight is of course one, and uh, people misperceive very low probabilities, which already discussed. And came in seven nine paper discuss all these things in detail. So one uh, implications uh, of this for uh, health economics is emphasized in the Rand you know health insurance experiment. Uh, you will see um, that I'll just take another two three minutes to wind off. That uh, the UT uh, 
expected utility theorem finds that the families with similar incomes and risk of illness would demand similar level of insurance regardless of what type of coverage they had during the experiment. Okay, RAND experiment also we have discussed in other uh, units. Uh, whereas, in case of uh, prospect theory, families who were assigned to have less insurance coverage during the experiment were willing to pay much less than the families broader insurance coverage for a new insurance plan after the experiment. Okay, it is how these two are actually different, you can just have a check. So, this shows that consumers that gains uh, and loses asymmetrically, not you know, symmetrically. There is some inertia in plan choice. The plans that are held more uh, highly valued than equivalent plans that have not been at all purchased. It has effect of status quo as well as endowment bias. Okay, some other uh, have also discussed this. However, um, in health insurance and uh, covering only losses case, people makes you know um, I mean makes people act risk lobbying. Using prospect theory, the authors explain both over insurance for cars, electronics, and under insurance for health. Uh, so showing how this theory applies to different type of insurance decisions. So you can just go through this case and it will be interesting for you to read. Okay. So, we have just said the end uh, we want to emphasize uh, one case based in India by a topmost by those topmost authors we have cited their work explanation of how low takeoff of micro insurance in India from behavioral economics all right and the prospect theory is largely discussed and uh, they have cited the case of Yossessini cooperative farmers. Uh, healthcare schemes, which is largely self-funded scheme based in Karnataka, India. Prospect theory says that individuals are risk towards gains, but least risk loving towards losses. Because health insurance uh, covers losses, individuals should act as risk lover for their demand for health insurance. Similarly, hyperbolic discounters are more willing to buy insurance. I mean, it's not just a you know linear. Um, approach there are hyperbolic you know context as well and that is also noted. So uh, finally in the results they uh, it is evidence uh, for the adverse selection as households with a higher ratio of risk members are more likely to purchase insurance. Behavioral explanation for low of tech is also given. Uh, so even we will discuss this details. So, in addition to that, there are um, some aspects to be noted called health technology assessment. In uh, we have already discussed, uh, uh, in we, uh, we are actually discussing in unit number 8 on theory and principles of economic evaluation. Uh, we will study the methods uh, uh, to you know quantify the benefit of medical treatment, such as standard gambles and time trade off, uh, the two methods, etc., are, are, are discussed. And uh, especially in um, the author, uh, you know, Blecho, uh, 2002, explained the disparity between these uh, two that is uh, standard uh, gambles and uh, the, the time trade off, um, emphasizing the probability weighting, loss aversion, and scale com com you know, compatibility. So, they also uh, derived uh, um, the explanation for um, expected utility theorem and the, the prospect theory. Uh, and its implications you can just go through I am sure it will be uh, interesting. Uh, prospect theory also suggests that small interventions and nudges can have outsized effects as well. Some of the uh, um, things you will find out uh, especially the status quo effects as part of the RAND uh, HI experiment. Similarly other aspects like school cafeteria as an example we discussed and we will also discuss more about NOS theory in our other lecture. Okay, so, so next lecture in particularly uh, emphasizing on time inconsistency theory of behavioral economics. These are readings for your reference. I hope uh, you will have interest to study and there are so many things in between. We are just giving you the fundamentals to behavioral economics. That is all for today. Thank you.